iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. Welcome to another episode of Growing Up Broadway, the world's first podcast for theater makers who are young or young at heart. Today's show features Director of Education for Disney Theatrical, Lisa Mitchell, and Grammy, Tony, Academy Award winning songwriters, Benj Pastic and Justin Paul. So help me Sondheim. So help me Sondheim. Growing up, yeah, we're growing up. Welcome to Growing Up Broadway. I'm your host, your co-host, Timothy Allen McDonald. I'm your other co-host, S.J. Arniger. So, S.J., the glimmer of hope keeps a glittering here in New York. Um, yes, it does. can now get tested to see if, if we have the antibodies. Um, so, I'm super excited, and after this, I'm going to go stand on the sidewalk with 6,000 other of my best friends. <laughs> Um, hoping that I too can get tested to make sure that I did indeed have that nasty little virus. I had like 10 friends text me yesterday that they all got approved to be tested. So they're all excited to see if it actually came to fruition and if they can help other people. So thank God we now have it here. Yeah, the downside, my panic this morning is like, what if I didn't, what if I test negative? And then I'm going to be like, well, what was that week for? I mean, you were sick, so. <laughs> I was in direct contact. That sounds very selfish. I take that all back. I take that all back, so. You're healthy now. That's all that matters. It is all that matters, and everyone I know is healthy right now, and that is making me very, very happy. So yes, exactly. how would you end? What'd you do we this week? Um, I wound up having to work. We had our uh, second iHeartRadio Broadway Saturday matinee with Town, and I often forget how epically long but gorgeous that cast album is for Hades Town. So the program wound up being about two and a half hours long for us with all the liners and all the amazing content that they provided for us. So I was live tweeting throughout the whole entire show, interacting with fans. So it was, it was epic and wonderful and just really enjoyable way to spend a Saturday afternoon. But Hades Town fans are like, they're like into it, right? Super epic and super like all over it, I would think. Yes. Well, I feel like every show we have lined up so far, there's such a huge fan base for the show. So, I mean, we announced Dear Evan Hansen, which we'll talk about in a little bit with Benj and Justin, but our social media went nuts on Monday when we announced Dear Evan Hansen. Now, we also announced it three weeks ago with the rest of the lineup, but my God, the Dear Evan Hansen fans come in strong and they are passionate, passionate fans. Well, and I'll bet they're all, especially like a lot of those folks who are like seeing the show week after week and, or, you know, multiple times in a week, this is their chance to come together and like celebrate the thing that really unites them. I think that's so cool what you've created. Well, and it's also really interesting to find out where the fans are worldwide too. So we have fans in Australia that keep asking what time they can listen and fans in South America. And we unfortunately have to tell people that there are certain countries you can't listen to the iHeart app, but it's really fantastic to see how far spread musical theater fandom really is in the world. True, 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 true. We, we found that also with the big one oh, um, with that, with our online version of it, that um, the fan, you know, Chile and Australia, New Zealand, England, Germany, really just Hawaii all over the place. Yeah. So what, how was your weekend? What were you up to? Um, well, we hosted our pink party on oh, that's right. Yes, you were there for a hot second. I was. Um, it was good, but it wasn't the same. I miss having people in, you know, in and around us eating awesome food and wearing pink and celebrating um, spring and the beautiful cherry trees that are across from my apartment. But hey, next year. Next year. It'll happen next year. It will. So you also just launched a couple new things with iTheatrics, correct? We did. So Robert Kiki and I got commissioned by the Kennedy Center to write a 10 minute play. And since I don't do plays, um, <laughs> we decided to write a 10 minute musical. And um, it's this new initiative called Play at Home. And so the show was written so that families could put on this show with whatever they have. Um, and it was really fun. We had, we had to write it in three days. That was the challenge. Um, 
you know, what, which what, was a, what's it called? It is called. <laughs> are you ready for this? Super original. The greatest ten-minute musical ever written. <laughs> so original. So original. <laughs> and you know, it's probably one of the few ten-minute musicals ever written. So it seemed fair to say that it it was the greatest. Um, but they are announcing this uh, today, actually, on the. Oh. Center's website. You can download all these plays. I mean, the, the playwrights who are involved are like, wow, 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 wow. Um, and it's free, you download it. Um, and so it's something that like parents can do with their kids that doesn't involve, you know, online learning. You just take it out and do it and have fun. That's great. And I hear the lineup for this Friday's JT Friday is pretty epic. Yeah, well, you're going to join us. I am. <laughs> uh, Dan Mertzloff is going to do another sing along, and uh, we're going to do a sneak peek of our latest online musical Zoomsicle, which is Uni the Unicorn. And Christina Alabado is going to perform from uh, oh, Girl. So, yeah, she's awesome. Just a quick update didn't the Big One O just get nominated for an award? We did for, um, I should know what it was for. It's like the Broadway Alliance. The Broadway Off -Broadway Alliance. Alliance. Off -Broadway. Off -Broadway. That would make sense since we were at the Atlantic. Um, yeah, we did. I was, I had no idea. I saw that nominations were announced in the briefing and I was, you know, looking at them, but I didn't go all the way to the bottom of the page where family theater is usually listed. Uh, <laughs> so. But Doug Besterman caught it. And yeah, I'm really excited and really honored. It's cool, um, you know, to get recognized. I love that show and, um, um, and it played well. So it's nice to get some recognition. Congrats, that's really awesome. I know you guys worked really hard on that show. Yes, yes. Uh, so what else should we talk about? Gianna, we saw her launch the iTheatrics TikTok challenge. She's such a trooper. Yeah, I mean, God bless Gianna. Hey, Dan, do you have the video? It's really short, but it brings me so much joy. That was my phone, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she is, it's not Broadway calling. <laughs> um, <laughs> she is a trooper. So do we get you to do the TikTok challenge? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Um, so what else? Um, you've got the You Can't Stop the Beat initiative. With, oh, with that's MTI. right. Thank you for talking about my own initiative. Yeah, MTI. Uh, we are doing the You Can't Stop the Beat challenge. Uh, basically, get up, get dancing, get singing to Hairspray in your living room, your backyard. Um, tag us on the Instagram and the Twitter with um, iHeartRadio Broadway and MTI, and then hashtag MTI shows. You can be featured on our social channels. So everything is on MTI show, mtishows.com with the info for how you can participate. And Stephen taught you can't, uh, you can't stop the beat yesterday at Teachable Tuesdays, well, two days ago. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so teachers now, if they, if they can't make up their own choreography, they've got the same choreography we performed at the White House for Mrs. Obama. There you go. Yes. So I think we should welcome our first guests. Absolutely. So please welcome to the podcast, Grammy, Tony, Academy Award winning songwriting team, Benj Pasek and Justin Paul. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hey. I, like, I like all of this. I also love how you guys color coordinated today. You Didn't know, we? We have a similar, there's a similar backdrop palette going on, I isn't know. there? No, it seems very intentional. I wish that we could say that we were that intentional, but hey, we're here. We're color coordinated. What can we we're say? Just earth, we're just earthy people, earth tone, <laughs> you know, extravaganza. When I think of the two of you, I think definitely, you know, dull shades of gray. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tim. I really Thank appreciate you. that. Thank you. Tim, a lot. Tim, Tim was my um, roommate uh, for a month when we were developing James and the Giant Peach. So I have a deep affection for, he can make fun of me in any way and, and I'll, I'll just, I'll accept it. 
Hey, we, we saw it all and, and made cake. We did. We made some. some saw it all cake. and did it all. Yes. And, and still have more to do. And you all know what I'm talking about. We'll move on. Yeah, we do. Can't talk I, about it. I actually have no idea what's happening. We made, a, we made a certain pledge. We'll talk about it offline. Oh, yeah. got it. Okay. A lot of inside jokes here. Sorry to the audience at home. So with James and the Giant Peach, you all have known each other for quite a long time. How did the partnership form between the three of you all? Ooh. Ooh. Timothy, is this a you answer or an us answer? I think it's better from your point of view. We each have our, I guess, our versions of it, right? For uh, for we, I, we, we were, you know, uh, younger, obviously, when we met. We were probably 23 or 24, 25, something like that. Um, really hungry, young writers living in New York City, you know, basically just like trying to put ourselves out there in any way, in any capacity um, uh, for people who would want to work with us. And I think people had recommended, uh, uh, Tim, you were looking for collaborators on James and the Giant Peach and, 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 and some folks that we knew and some mutual colleagues and friends had recommended us to you, um, much to your detriment and <laughs> yeah, now, the story goes like this i get a phone call it's lynn aarons hey tim it's lynn um i just worked with these really fantastic songwriters they're young they're hungry they're terrific you should consider them for james and the giant peach and then like an hour later michael kirker called same script from ascap from ascap yes and then, he was a coordinated attack okay that's and the then, story it was the <laughs> The piece de resistance is like Freddie Gershon calling and being like, you're going to write this show with them, bye. <laughs> <laughs> In but only if I, like Freddie can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, we were very, very young at the time and it was like a huge deal that Tim took a risk on us. Huge. And it, it, was, it was like, you know, if not our first, one of our first, but I think our first like professional job that we ever- Yeah, it was definitely got. the first one that we got, that we were considered for, that we like, signed on for, quote unquote. And, yeah. you know, they definitely, Tim and the producer were taking a big risk on us. Um, you know, Tim gave us, and we had to audition, which was, which was totally like, cool. And that was, the, that was the name of the game at that time. And so Tim gave us some script pages and um, some song, like a song idea here, this song, here's the opening number. Here's a song for James to sing. And it was sort of up to us to audition. So we went away and, and, and wrote a couple songs um, and then came back and, uh, you know, we made up, made a track for them and like performed them with like, uh, you know, just singing our hearts out, like our brains out, um, like two crazy people. Um, I think we probably did maybe a Spiker and Sponge song too. You might have given us a lot of assignments as, I, as I'm now looking back on it. It was a really yeah. I think, heavy I think you were like, hey, yeah, like come back in like in like a week and like write like three original songs <laughs> with like full backing track. This man is a taskmaster. I gave you time, and you guys were like, we're ready. I was like, we'll see you in two or three weeks, and you like, <laughs> and you called like three days later, and like we're ready to go. But it was well, cool. I gave you a meeting. You're like, well, we had nothing else going on. <laughs> you're like. It shouldn't be this available. Bad sign for us. Yeah. Bad sign. <laughs> I gave you the opening number, which was really cruel, and I would never do that again. So I owe you that apology. Oh, good. I'm glad we. I'm glad we got to be your guinea pigs for that. All these years. All these years later, Tim. That's all I've been waiting for. Actually, we came onto the show today just so that you would apologize for that. So <laughs> this has now. been coordinated <laughs> by your staff, by your family and friends. This is actually an intervention. Is, intervention. I'm glad I can make this intervention work today. Yes, thank you, SJ. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, so going so, from, oh, Tim, just, Tim, question. To your credit, to your credit, of the, I think, four songs, three of them are in the show. Yeah, that might be true. And one of them we circled back to. Like, you know, one of them, like we, as often is the case, right? We wrote a new song for it, and then it's like we ended up coming back to, um, an old one, which, you know, which happens all the time in making a musical, you throw something out, you come back to it, you rearrange it and you do it. But yeah, no, that was, that was, um, you know, we had a crazy uh, journey and ride together on that show. But, um, you know, I think we all wouldn't change a thing because it's, it's stories to last the last time. And now we're so proud of the show. Yeah. So going from you all collaborating for the first time to today, did you ever think that James and the Giant Peach would be as successful as it is today? Oh my God, no, not at all. There were definitely times when we did. I'll tell you, there were definitely times when we did. <laughs> <laughs> it 
Yeah, when we were developing it out of town, you know, we it went through many different um, versions, and it finally really came together uh, in Seattle at Seattle Children's Theater, um, working with Tim and um, Linda Hartzell and a great group of people, where we got to take the best of what we had been working on and reimagine a lot of other things, and and really, you know. I think the the big revelation for us was that we got to really lean into um, writing a, a show for uh, young audiences and not trying to make it something that it wasn't, but embracing that form. And like, you know, those shows are so fun when you like really let yourself write for, for those characters and that audience and, and, um, and not try to make it something that was more sinister or darker, or, you know, seemingly older than it had to be. Like we really got to, to write for that form and that I think unlocked everything for us and getting to see other shows in that space that were so successful really taught us a lot about, you know, that, that, that young people are some of the best um, audience members because they don't lie to you. They like tell you exactly what they think by how they react in a, in a theater. If they laugh, it's genuine. And if they walk out, it's genuine too. Whereas adults think they have to be much more polite and then you never really know how your show is. So we were very, very grateful to get a very honest and real audience um, in Seattle and get to shape the show for them and subsequently, you know, have it go out in the world and have it be, performed and shared by uh, so many different uh, uh, people. And it's been a, an incredible uh, joy to see it spread, you know, around the country. I think one of my favorite memories, I've met both of you at JTF prior, but we were all at the International Thespian Festival together. And I, I got to sit with you that. while we watched the Kansas City All-Stars perform James and the Giant yes. Peach. And I have to say, I don't think I watched the show. I think I watched all three of you react more so. So what's yeah. it like when you actually watch these kids perform the show well that's the thing is like not only are, it, are the young audiences like so much more honest in such a helpful way as a writer but um lensing the show that way and sort of putting it into that um uh, that form or with that audience like has lent itself to i'm i'm positive far more creative productions and far more sort of handmade imaginative wild um, realization then probably ever would have happened otherwise so for us it's um like i don't i think that if we thought the show was supposed to be a broadway show or whatever like there was like one vision of it and now when we get to see the show whether it's at kansas city all-stars or wherever it is like uh, th we never could have imagined the thousands of ways that people are realizing the show everything from like, really elaborate incredible costumes to like you know basically pretending that thin air is something and pulling something from somewhere and there's like a paper bag and something else and then it becomes you know you're like oh i didn't see it. i never saw it that way i didn't realize it could be that way so we're grateful to have gotten to work on the show and for it to have taken the path that it took because it has allowed for people to be creative I and mean, that, that's like i think the ultimate reward as a writer is when you can put something out there in the world and then see it um realized um and adapted by creative people and especially creative young people or for a young audience in ways that you never would have imagined. So every time we see a production of it or see video of it or anything, we're floored and so delighted because the piece allows for such imagination. And that's part of it is that of us letting go of it and saying like, it's yours now, you create your thing with it. And that's the coolest thing as a writer. And from there, you all also created this ultimate cast album for James and the Giant Peach. How did that come to be? And how was it asking all of these major Broadway stars to be on the James and the Giant Peach cast album? Tim you know, it them. came together, I think, because we Tim were so did proud. Some kind of magic. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was all it was all <laughs> Tim. Um, uh, <laughs> no, it, it came together because we. We were really, we were really proud of what um, of what we had all created, and we wanted to make sure that uh, that we got to have it um, be sort of memorialized in some way or captured in some way. Um, and so we were really lucky that you know everybody that we reached out to. I think the power of the story of James and the Giant Peach and the fact that it is such a, a beloved story and a classic Roald Dahl um, book and fantastical characters but even more so I think the reason that so many of these Broadway people did it 
is because they know the power of what stories um, for young people have. And if you, you know, when you listen to your first, um, you know, cast recording as a kid, or, you know, one, one of the things that you hear when you're younger, that music stays with you your entire life. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that that made people really want to be a part of it because to get to be a part of a, a child's, you know, first, you know, uh, confrontation or, or uh, you know, uh, you know, the first time that they hear a CD or the first time that they meet these characters, like that's a really, really special thing that like when you're at that certain age, you're going to remember for the rest of your life. And so I think everybody was really, really eager to do it uh, because, you know, these Broadway actors, they get to be the definitive ladybug, you know, forever for a, a kid as they grow up or the definitive grasshopper. And, um, and so that was so fun to be able to put together and do and work on. The cast album for James is still available, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you could just go to jatgp.com, which is James and the Giant Peach, those like letters, and it's still free. That's amazing. I'm glad you guys still have that out for people to be able to listen to. We are too. Yeah. yeah we love it. We're so proud of it. We such a, like, we're so lucky that we got that all star cast, but like Ben was saying, everyone believed in James and Giant Peach. And, and also, like, because of the, the approach, which was like, hey, let's just get this out to families. Let's Get, let's make this something that kids can listen to in the car with their parents. Let's make this available to everybody for free. You know, everybody was so game to jump in and they all just like came in and learned this music quickly. And, and we just like banged it out in the, in, in the, uh, in the recording studio, which was such a fun process. Also, I keep forgetting that Luca performed James, sang James as like, a, he's like four years old, I swear. He's like, yeah, yeah right. It's, it's crazy. I also remember, us sitting around one of the like plastic tables at iTheatrics and like you guys had brought in a list and we were all comparing like, okay, we need like a Mary Testa type. We need- Right, 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 right. Right? And then someone was like, well, why are we trying to get a type? Let's just ask them. <laughs> That's never gonna happen. And then it did. Fair enough. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. So also moving away from James, you guys are a part of the new iHeartRadio Broadway Saturday matinee program. This Saturday, Dear Evan Hansen is gonna be live hey. at 2 p.m. It's very yeah. exciting. It's, it's so uh, yeah, a whole nother uh, world of people that are gonna be exposed to Broadway, uh, uh, to Broadway musicals and original cast albums and uh, soundtracks from movies. I mean, it's, it feels like a really, really exciting expansion of our little world to go out into the larger world and, and have even more people uh, get excited about the dorky things that we're already excited by. Well, and it was amazing when we, like I was saying at the beginning of the podcast, it was absolutely unreal to see the fans' reaction from all across the world and how they can listen if iHeart is even available in certain countries. So your fan base is strong and they are dedicated fans. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Nice. Yeah, no, we're, 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 the show is so lucky and it's, it's, you know, it, it's cool that it's a show that is ultimately about connection and community and, and, and finding people. And, you know, obviously in this moment that we're all in, um, you know, I hope people get the chance to tune in and uh, any of these things that we can do together right now that we can actually do together, that we can do at the same time, whether it's tuning into this podcast or tuning into the Saturday matinee thing, um, it's a healthy, wonderful thing and like a, a mechanism of survival, I think, in this moment. So we're so glad it's happening and it's so glad that you, that you guys are doing it and um, everyone can tune in and hear, you know, we all like you know, have, have included our um, little tidbits about songs and like really random stuff. Like there's probably some um, like, you know, interesting back backstage sort of stories and like, you know, secrets of the songwriting. It's like not that interesting, but like, you know, we're gonna pretend like it is right now. Like there's nothing like, you know, body happening behind the scenes, but like, no, there's like little, it's all the dorky stuff that we all care about, how the songs got written why this orchestration was chosen for this moment and, and all that stuff. And so it's a fun way for us to all get to share those stories together and, and get to come together at a moment where we need to come together. I will say I got to listen to all the content liners that were sent to us and they're fantastic between what YouTube provided and then Alex Lacamoire, Jordan Fisher. I mean, 
the fans of the show are going to have a great time listening to this exclusive content. It's really top notch. So thank you guys for, for being a part of it and saying yes. Thank you. Yeah, for of course. It. Thank you. Yeah. I'm so excited. Hey, you guys talk, talk to us about um, the new book. Well, new book of like three weeks ago. I don't know. In quarantine time. time <laughs> so uh, talk to us about You Will Be Found. It's such a beautiful, beautiful book. Oh, thank you. You know, it's so funny. Uh, the, the, there, there's a book called You Will Be Found. And it's, it's basically an illustrated book uh, to the lyrics of the song You Will Be Found from Dear Evan Hansen. And we worked with this amazing uh, illustrator named Sarah J. Coleman. Um, another SJ. Another SJ. Watch out. The other the, SJ. The other oh, SJ. The other. You know what I mean? Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Specific. <laughs> got it. Um, and she just, she created the most beautiful um, sort of world through illustration of, uh, of, you know, what the message behind the song is really about, which is when you're feeling alone or when you're feeling lost or when you're feeling disconnected, um, that there are people that will be there and love you and accept you and that there is a whole world waiting um, to, uh, to be there for you if you re just reach out, you know? And if you just have the courage to kind of look left and look right and, and, and say, hey, I'm feeling a little bit alone right now or I'm feeling a little bit lost. Um, or for honestly, anybody who's at the start of a, a new chapter in their life and they, you know, don't know which direction they're gonna go in, it's kind of like a little token to be able to give to somebody to say, hey, I'm thinking about you or I'm here or, you know, you can kind of count on me. Um, and, and the book um, was supposed to come out right at the beginning of all of the corona craziness. Um, we had an event plan that we were gonna release it and it was like literally with like the, two days after you know things began to get canceled and, and get shut yeah. down and so um it's sort of ironic that this book really that's about offering a little glimmer of hope in some um uncertain times you know came out at this exact moment when i think a lot of people are looking for a little bit of hope during a very uncertain time um but uh it's it's available and it's it's i think for me it's really beautiful to see how it's translated into a different medium um, and uh, and we're really excited to be able to share it with fans and really anybody who's looking for um, a, a sort of a beautifully illustrated reminder that we're a community and that we're all connected. I think what's so amazing is the book is not just for one age group. It's really for everybody to be a part of. And I think that's what yeah. translates so well. It's literally for everybody. Yeah, that, that, that was our hope. I mean, that we, 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 we talked about this. It's like, it's a book that I could read to my kids or it's a book that you can give someone for graduating college or for um, a middle-aged person starting a new job or whatever it is, you know, it, it definitely was our hope that people would share it, that it's something that you might get for yourself, but you know, maybe even more likely it's something that you give to someone that you pass on, that you share this message of saying like, Hey, this book talks about how we're here for each other and I'm here for you. You know, we even sort of like wanted to we made that a little bit of part of the book where you can sort of write in, you know, if, who, who it's from and who it's to so that I can really feel like a gift in that way. And, for, for like the sort of like nerds among us who know Dear Evan Hansen well, you know, as if you know the show, the, the, the song takes place in a certain context that sort of like has a lot of other layers to it and some other nuance and, and sort of like a uh, context. But it was really amazing to get to create this book because it, it was, it, it's, it's serving one purpose and one story, which is that message of community and that message of connection the message of, hey, have you ever felt this way? We'll always remember, always keep looking up, keep reaching out. Um, there are people there for you. And the book's available, I assume, on, it is, because I looked it up. It's on Amazon, right? And yeah, if you can get Amazon to deliver it to you, <laughs> you will, you know, it hasn't been like deemed, I guess, maybe essential, I don't know. But, um, but yes, it's, it's uh, Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and um, uh, any of the online, um, uh, bookshops and then and, and hopefully, you know, at some point soon we'll, 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 we'll have it that we can all go into the world again and, 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 and hold it in our hands in a bookshop, but yeah. Yes. Hey, so right before all this happened, you two got to meet Prince William and his, you know, lovely spouse, Catherine, the Duchess of Cambridge. Mm -hmm. So like, how did that unfold and what was that like? 
pretty wild. It was a pretty wild thing. You know, they, um, they are uh, big uh, believers in wanting to have national and international conversations about the importance of discussing mental health. That's a big initiative that they really, really care about. And obviously that's very aligned with what we at Dear Evan Hansen, you know, want to talk about. And that's what a big part of the show is sort of destigmatizing, um, you know, talking about a lot of issues that sometimes they're really hard to talk about. And so uh, the, the Dutch and uh, the, the Duke and the Duchess uh, came to the show and uh, used the opportunity as a sort of charity event um, for their mental health charity and to raise awareness. And we got to meet them. And it was a, an incredible experience of getting to, uh, you know, shake hands when we were still allowed to do that in a, in a different time and in a different world back in February. Hey. Um, and, uh, and, and get to basically sit with them while they watched our show and, uh, and you know, mingle during the intermission and get to, you know, get to know them a little bit. And they're such incredible, um, such incredible people. And, uh, and they really, really care about this issue uh, in a really genuine way. It was so heartening to see um, how much, uh, they they've taken it to heart and 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 want to really promote this message of of community and connection and destigmatization of you know of some really difficult topics. And Dan, I believe we have a couple photos of the event that took place. Oh, there we are. Justin, you bowed. You bowed to royalty. Okay, so let's talk about this. All right. <laughs> so um. So okay. So so here's the amazing thing is, um getting to meet them uh was yes really amazing but was also what was amazing was the like really intense prep and like protocol like protocol. we had like we had like you know before we ever traveled over for the event there were like emails with like bullet lists you know outlines punch list items of like here's all the things you need to know here's what you say and don't say about whatever and then when we went for the event there was like a walkthrough of like here's where you're gonna stand and you stand you stand you stand you stand and then a talk through of like, here's what you can say. Like, it's like, it's really amazing. It's also ridiculous, but like, you love it. Cause like, we don't have this in our country and it's right. incredible. So like, they're, they're basically, it's like, so when you meet them, like you have to first say your highness, right? And then you can say, wait, what is it? Like you can say um, your highness. And then after that, you, you say, um, I think you always say your highness. Like there's one thing where you first have to say, greet them as one thing. And then once you've done that, you're allowed to say something else. But all, look, all I know is that there was a big thing about like bowing and curtsying for men and women. So like, so it's like, uh, so I was really in my head, like this bow is like super important. Like, you know, like this is the big thing. And everyone was talking beforehand, like, do you bow this much or this much, like too much, too little. And I just, I wasn't going to be the guy who didn't bow enough. You know what I mean? So like, uh, you know, when it came my moment, I really went for it. As you can see in this photo where I am just bowing from the waist to someone that is literally like two feet away from me. It's look so at her face. She's like, great. look at this adorable little tacky American bowing down to me. It's so look, great. Look at this little American rat. The best, the best part for me is that I totally forgot to bow. So, um, the, the and yeah, and, and like some subconscious way, I was like, because like every we all froze up in different times, different yeah. ways. We so like Stephen didn't bow. Ben was just like, hi, whatever. And so my way of responding was just doubling down on. He just bow. overcompensated for our lack of bow to like <laughs> literally touch his toes on his way <laughs> to the bow, and it was an extraordinary sight to see, and it is forever captured in this photo. And I'm, I'm, so, I'm glad. so happy. I'm just so happy that that it's, 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 it's good. Relaxed. I just love that pity on her face. Oh my god! She's it, like, it's she's like, it's, this is so adorable and piteous. Like I'm alone. <laughs> this is so her face is just saying like, oh, oh no, no, oh darling, yes. Oh. <laughs> Please stand. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh so with everything going on, the craziness that we're all experiencing, how are you both? you know, sticking together, but then also how's the Dear Evan Hansen family kind of sticking together through everything? You know, I think it's it's really heartening to know. We, we, we've done a couple of interviews and seen some of the cast that way. Yeah. I think it's just heartening to know that we're part of a show that talks about and celebrates connection and celebrates the idea that when, you know, you feel a little bit lost, that there's a community that will be there for you and that the show can really reinforce 
a lot of the messaging that I think a lot of people need to hear right now and that the actors yep. and, and the folks who are involved in it can can be um, can like sort of serve in that way um, to people who need to hear that message. So I think that that's a little bit heartening. And I think, you know, to be honest, we're all trying to get by the best we can and it's a confusing time and nobody has a right answer. Um, but uh, I think we're hopeful uh, that, that, you know, Broadway will come back better than ever. And we can't wait until, um, you know, we're, we're sitting next to each other in Broadway theaters again and, and things can be, you know, go back to the sort of sense of normality. But um, in the meantime, I think we're all just figuring it out and, and doing the best we can and, and being very grateful for the moments that we get to share with our dear Evan Hansen family and knowing that the message from the show can resonate with people and help people even in the smallest of ways. Well, each week we ask our guests to take a special musical theater based quiz. Uh -oh. so I'll throw out just a bunch of random questions. Oh, hold on, God. gotta pull up. Hold on, gotta pull up Google. One second. <laughs> <laughs> it will not help you. Um, just answer whatever comes into your head first, or okay. whatever um, Siri tells you to say. Okay. 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 All right. On your mark, get set, go. What's your favorite musical of all time? Merrily we roll along. Sweeney Todd. Funniest or most embarrassing thing that has ever happened to you live on stage. There's so many things. Oh, um, God. I had my, I was dancing in a production of Merrily We Roll Along, which why was there dancing it, first of all. But second of all, I, and I, this is not embarrassing, but it's funny now, had my toenail ripped off mid-performance oh. um, by the person I was dancing with. Like they stepped on my toenail, it flipped up, came off, and I did the rest of act two oh. with that happening. So at the end of the show, I'm playing Franklin Shepard. I'm literally like standing up there. I'm literally just, sweat is just, like I'm beat red, sweat in my face, and I'm like, it's our time. Breathe. Just literally dying. I hate that story so much. <laughs> uh, mean that I'm feeling right now. Oh God. Ugh. Mine would be that I was in 42nd Street in like, I don't know, maybe in high school, and you know, like the we're in the money thing. They wanted us to like dance in like, first of all, dance was a problem but dance in like, you know, potato sacks to show that like everyone was on the bread line or whatever. And whoever did my costuming just didn't figure it out. And the whole like potato sack just fell off and I was just dancing in my underwear. So we're in the money in 40 minutes. <laughs> so Sounds you're true. provocative. Very yeah. provocative production. There's definitely a metaphor in that somewhere. There um, is, absolutely. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, if you could play too far. regardless of gender, which would you choose? If we, <sighs> If we could play any role? Yeah, if you could perform any role, regardless of gender. Oh my God. I mean, I don't, I would prefer to never have to perform. Uh, and that's why I want to be a <laughs> um, But if I were forced to perform, uh, um, I mean, maybe Mama Rose, you know? Ooh. Yeah, pretty juicy. Go on. Go on. Um, who do I, who? Uh, <laughs> It's a stressful question. It is a stressful question. I was, I had some thoughts that I, I was going to throw, like, let's just leave it at this. Like, if I could be like a soulful belting lead of a musical, that's what I want to be. There's a lot of the ones that I can be. I'm not going to wade into these waters too much, but like, there's another me that wants to live that life. Oh yeah. I would be okay. alpha in a second. Yes. <laughs> in a second. Yes. Give me that broom, give me that black hat, give me that- And, other, and, and, and other highly inappropriate roles for yeah. me. Who do you want to be when you grow up? Oh my God. I mean, the scary thing is we're in our thirties, so we probably already uh, grew up, uh, yeah. but- um, Greta, I mean- um, There are so many people. There's so many people that we look up to and respect. There's too many people, but I mean, just like to throw out some, we've been very lucky to have some amazing mentors in the musical theater world. You know, Freddie G is among them and- yeah. uh, uh, we've had great mentors and people like Steven Schwartz and Lynn Ahrens and David Zippel and Jeff Marks and, you know, uh, Steven Sondheim's career has been amazing. And, and, yeah. and producers that we love, like, you know, Mark Platt and people like that. So there's just a lot of people that we look up to. Yeah. yeah. And on, on that thing, I'd say that like what we want to be in and grow up is like a person who maybe has achieved something, maybe has not, I don't know, but like still takes the time. That's the thing that's been crazy to us, especially working in the theater and in film and, and, and writing as writers is that people who are those heroes to us who still take time 
to mentor younger people and to give back in that way when they really don't need to and and no one would even expect them to and like doing that that unexpected generosity like is that's so incredible and something to aspire to that's so true and just to add on to that a little bit like all the people that i just mentioned were people that like gave us time before like we right. had any success and the people that influence you when you're at the precipice or you're a young person those are the people that you remember and you hold to be your for sure. for the rest of your life and so um yeah the people can do small things that make huge impacts on young lives all right if you could only eat one thing for the rest of eternity what would it be guacamole wow that fastness the quickness of that answer was it's, it's just it's never been a question for me it's just it's it's wow. right there I would say, I would say, I would say cookie dough, but I'm in a mood this week. I yeah. figured out how to kind of make my own little brand of cookie dough from the Levan recipe and I'm really going for it. So you have been posting a lot about that on your social media. A lot of cookie dough. A lot of cookie dough. Yeah. 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 All right. Which of the following characters was the most fun to write for PT Barnum, Spiker and Sponge, the old man or Mia Dolan? Spiker and Sponge hands Spiker down because Sponge. we are them. I don't yeah. know if you know this. <laughs> oh my god. Ted no. has seen far too many performances Abs like in various states of lots of things of us as Spiker and Sponge. And the world, I don't, I don't think the world's really ready for it, so I don't really want to go there. But it's definitely the most fun for us to write because as we wrote the characters, we became the characters and they became us. Yes. Very true. You know, Tim, are we wrong? <laughs> Still, the finest embodiment of Spiker and Sponge ever have been the two of you. I'm just waiting for you to age in the role. I know, I know. Yeah. It's we'll on my a, mind a lot. We'll do a reunion concert one day. Yeah. We actually want to do a reunion on the podcast of the James <laughs> the Giant Peach cast. That's amazing. amazing. That yeah. would be amazing. That'd be amazing. That's kind of our, our dream scenario right now. That would be incredible. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, last question. Moonlight or La La Land? Oh, stop. <laughs> Very good. Wow, really? Did, I mean, truly didn't see that one coming. <laughs> Did not see that one coming. I'm going wow. to just plead the fifth and, um, and just say two, two beautiful movies. Wow. Well, congratulations. You have won an IOU for a brand new Mercedes. Oh. <gasps> Matchbox cars. Branded matchbox cars for everybody. That's the way you trick us. Beautiful. I see. Sorry. It's beautiful. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. I know right now things are up in flux and crazy. So I, I do appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Thank Absolutely. you for having us. Thanks for thanks, having us. Thanks for your mission and what you guys are doing. Yeah, thanks for doing this. You guys are influencing like so many countless lives. And I, I know that you guys know that, but it's just, it bears repeating that. Um, it's just, it, it really makes a big difference. And, and the kind of uh, stories and love and care that you give to people when they're young stays with them their whole lives. So it, it really, really matters. Thank you. Yep. Trust us. Hey, and I'll see you guys at our monthly uh, Sunday supper. Oh yeah, our Sunday supper that we always do, that we never do. I love that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bye -bye. everybody. They're so great. They're terrible. I don't even know why we had them on. <laughs> well, you have a different perspective just because you've known them for so long. <laughs> I adore those boys. And it's, I'm sure it's obvious. Um, truly, truly, truly terrific human beings inside now. Oh, well, let's welcome our next guest, which I'm really excited to have on because she's done so many remarkable things and is a JTF fan favorite. She is the Director of Education for Disney Theatrical, Lisa Mitchell. Hey, how are you both? Good, how are you? Good, I had so much fun watching that previous interview and I can't believe I have to follow that. They're so awesome. We end with the best, so there you go. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. <laughs> also, I got, Lisa, I gotta give you a shout out for truly the best background I have seen on any Zoom, and I've been on like <laughs> hours of Zoom meetings since this all happened. You, you win. I you love it. This is real. This isn't fake. This is real. This is my, um, my daughter's wallpaper. I was in my basement and I had my boiler behind me, so I decided to upgrade for y'all. So now she's in the basement 
and I'm in her room. Well, because I did ask you it. if it was a virtual background. I, I was like, that's the coolest virtual background ever. No, it's true wallpaper. Isn't it cool? It's Jonathan Adler. I love it. Oh. Yeah. I know. Love see, seeing people do the virtual backgrounds because then they all of a sudden like their arm disappears. <laughs> Isn't it great? Yes. Um, CBS Sunday Morning. Um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the host's name, but she uses a virtual background and then part of her body disappears. This <laughs> and I'm always like, she lost her arms <laughs> to do. Oh my gosh, it's hilarious. I love it. So Lisa, uh, Tim, do you take it? I was just going to say, how are you guys, where are you, and, and how's the family holding up? Yeah, so we're in Westchester County, New York, so um, we're doing okay, you know, we're on, what is this, week seven or eight of stay-at-home time, <laughs> um, we're, we're doing okay, we're very thankful, we're counting, you know, our blessings, we have a little yard that we can get out into, which is a game changer, um, definitely learning what it means to homeschool a preschooler, man, hats off to teachers, hats yeah. off to teachers this is this is a thing um but they're they're just doing so well and they're doing their best and they're figuring out how to make preschool engaging on zoom which is not how five-year-olds are supposed to learn and yet they're learning these teachers are miracle workers so thankful for them and also learning that i made the right choice not to be in a classroom and instead be in a theater <laughs> So Disney just launched a really exciting initiative. It's the Lion King experience that's now available online for people to be able to partake in right now. Yeah, we're really excited about it. So as you both know, when we released the Lion King Kids and Junior for schools to perform, we also made this like super comprehensive theater curriculum to go with it. And we did that because we knew that more schools than ever were going to want to license this show. The Lion King was iconic. It's running on Broadway. Um, it's had national tours, sit down productions around the world. And so we knew that a lot of schools who had maybe never done a show before would want to license The Lion King. We also know like straight up, The Lion King is a tough show. It is known for its rigor and its artistry, its music. It, there's like 11 different African languages in it, right? It, it's a tough first show. So we sort of embraced that challenge and said, okay, so how could we set schools up for success? How could we turn this problem on its head and make The Lion King a great entry level show for schools? And so we did that by developing the Lion King experience curriculum. And the idea with the original curriculum was that a school would license the production of the Lion King. If they had done theater before, they could just have at it and tackle the challenge. But if it was their first go, they might wanna do the curriculum first. And the curriculum was designed to introduce students, but also their teachers to all these different facets of theater making. So learning what it means to come up with a lighting design and how you use lighting to help tell the story learning why we sing songs in musical theater and what the structure of songs can be, right? Learning how design can influence storytelling. So that's this curriculum that we had out in the world that came with the Lion King Kids and Junior. And then when schools started shutting down and when theater started shutting down, we realized, well, gosh, like kids still need to learn, right? And people still need to make art. And we have this thing that we already made could we make some modifications to it and position it as an at-home experience and then just make it available for everyone? So that's what we've done. And it is available now at thelionkingexperience.com. And we hope people are exploring theater with it. That's amazing. And I think the fact that you guys, um, you jumped on it very quickly. I think also what Disney is doing, especially on social media, um, you guys are with the teaching artists teaching choreography on a weekly basis or doing other fun initiatives. Talk to us a little bit about that too. Yeah, well, I mean, it's funny, you know, we're it, in this period of time because kids still need to learn and people still need to make art. It's almost like we're, there's as much to do. We just have to figure out how to do it in a different way. And I feel like that's what our community is great at, right? Our community of theater makers are scrappy. We know how to work with scarcity of resources. We know how to invent and come up with creative solutions. But teachers are also scrappy. They're very used to like, ooh, that lesson didn't work. Let me change it up for this time, right? And so we're so fortunate that we get to work at the intersection of both of those things. So um, we've got this great team of teaching artists. We've got a phenomenal team at Disney Theatrical Group in the education department and our social media department. And so we figured, listen, we teach workshops 
day in and day out when theaters and schools are open. Let's just figure out how to do that on Instagram. <laughs> and, you know, we, we went through the learning curve. There's definitely like internet speed matters, right? And we're, we're figuring all that stuff out. But now we're, we're able to offer weekly sessions and it's, it's going to be, you know, sometimes it's Michael James Scott doing a Q&A. Sometimes it's one of our phenomenal teaching artists, Lauren Chapman, teaching, you know, choreography to He Lives in You with guests from the Lion King touring cast popping on. So we're learning how to pivot and just to kind of reinvent the way we do what we always do. I think it's, it's unbelievable what you guys are doing. And like I said, the fact that you jumped on it so quickly to help parents who are at home becoming teachers themselves, to give them these outlets is, is quite remarkable. So congratulations to you and to the Disney theatrical team. Thank you. We, we hope people engage with it. I also know that it's sort of like as a mom, I feel like, wow, the fire hose of free content is a lot. Um, so we also hope that theater kids that just want to kind of self-select into some things can, can find this stuff and just do it. And it was so funny making these at-home modifications for it because, I mean, everybody listening to this podcast knows that theater is a live in-person art. And now we're trying to teach kids in, in social isolation how to do theater. And there's, there's like a lot of like, get out your stuffed animals and stage the circle of life. <laughs> like, it gets a little kooky sometimes, but I also know as that former theater kid that that's probably what I was doing anyway, right? So we've learned to embrace it. Yeah, it does feel like we've, we've all gone back to our bedrooms as like, you know, 11 year olds. For me, it was, you know, performing all of Pippin, all the roles, you know, with every exactly. room. So it does feel like we've sort of evolved or devolved. I'm not sure back to that, but I, I don't hate it at all. Yeah, back to our roots, right? There you go. So Lisa, what's one thing you can't wait to do once this pandemic's over? I want to see some people. I, I want to see my friends. I want to see my colleagues. I want to go into our beautiful theater again. I mean, one of the great things about working um, at, for Disney Theatrical Group is that we're right in the New Amsterdam Theater. And so you walk through that one of the most gorgeous theaters on Broadway just to get to your desk. And I don't think I was taking it for granted, but I miss it so much. My basement is not beautiful. It is, it is uh, not a beautiful experience. And so just seeing audiences come in and seeing, you know, kids dressed up for their very first matinee performance, you know, in their, in their best clothes and school groups coming on buses to the theater. That's why we all do this. So I just, I'm, I'm ready to get, and I know it'll be, it's not just going to be return to normal one day, right? It's going to be, we're going to have to learn what new normal is over time, but I'm, I'm going to be excited and thankful for signs of normal like that again. Yeah, when I see the little kids dressed up as Elsa, Anna, Kristoff at the Wednesday matinees, I, I, that's when you know things will have returned to some sort of normal. That's right, yeah, just a, a reminder that art endures and people wanna tell stories and we've been doing it since the beginning of time. So we're gonna get past this, we're gonna keep telling stories. So Lisa, one more time, where can people find the Lion King experience? Sure, go to thelionkingexperience.com. You will be served up a sort of pop-up bubble when you get there and you'll see two sets of instructions. One set for the kids edition and that's really for elementary age students. And another set for the junior edition that's for more middle school age students. And those are just the at-home modifications that'll take you through um, and link you to these beautiful videos that are hosted by Cindy Winters and Jelani Remy who plays Simba and Nala and the Lion King. And they'll introduce you to the day's learning and then the PDF will talk you through how to take that learning and modify it to do on your own at home. Amazing. Lisa, thank you so much for joining us today for the podcast. We really appreciate it. And we hope you that are watching or listening, uh, go to the Lion King experience and be a part of it because I know the curriculum is really quite fantastic. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for making this podcast available to, to theater kids and the young at heart who need this now more than ever. It's um, Our community is, is really strong and having this I, this is the show i wish i had when i was 11. so this is terrific we're, we're gonna keep going and see what happens and hopefully one day we'll be back in studio <laughs> right so thank you lisa very much thank, thank you both great to see you bye bye hey. so that's today's lovely long episode of growing up broadway i am your co-host sj arniger and I'm your other co-host, Timothy Allen McDonald. And we will see you next week. But go out there this week and make the world a better place, one musical at a time. And may the Schwartz be with you.
and also with you. Growing up, growing up, growing up, Broadway, growing up, Broadway. iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing.